Hi, my name is Craig Resnick. I'm here at the ARC Orlando Forum 2014. With me is my special guest, Rebecca Boll, Executive Product Manager, GE Intelligent Platforms. How are you today, Rebecca? I'm great, thanks, Craig. Seemed like GE Intelligent Platforms had a lot of uh, momentum in its business in 2013. Uh, how is that going forward, in, as you see it, in 2014? Okay, well, I think I'd like to answer the question by talking a little bit about the momentum in 2013, what we did, and then I'll parlay that into how we continued in 2014, what in particular we are doing. So in 2013, our, our company as a whole, GE as an enterprise, doubled down in something we call controls convergence. And controls convergence, it means a lot of things, but for this discussion, I'll, I'll talk about two big chunks of it. Controls Convergence has a part of it that is the assimilation of a bunch of different businesses and an approach to industrial controls at GE. And it also is, of course, a technical roadmap. We're a technical company based in innovation, so there's a series of innovations under that. And when I talk about the, the assimilation of the company piece, what I, what I mean is I think most people know GE has an oil and gas company and a power and water company and a healthcare company and a transportation company. And in the past, we have approached industrial controls independently, different run times, different operating systems, different user experiences. And we've just, we've got a commitment from the different parts of the company that we're going to approach this in the same way with the same kind of technologies. So that's one piece. And it's really huge for GE to take something on like that. And I would be remiss to not explain why we're doing that. The reason that we're doing that is because we believe in the power of the industrial internet and we want to enable the industrial internet. And the way we do that as an enterprise is by these, what we call the brilliant machines, which, is, which are enabled by this approach to controls. So along with the, hey, we're all going to work together and accomplish this industrial internet, we have a technical roadmap. So we said, well, if we're going to invest some money, what kinds of things are we going to invest in? So we actually have a pretty tight series of technical innovations that we're looking at. And we at GE Intelligent Platforms, we lead that. We lead the technical innovation for the company in close partnership with our industrial research center. We're very fortunate at GE to have this amazing industrial research center um, in Niski in New York. So together we've defined some areas, I'm sure I won't say them all, but the, the areas that we're focused on are user experience, runtime, tools, security, uh, uh, model-based controls, yeah, th those are the th few I can cover. I think we have about eight areas that we're focused on collectively as a company. Controls configurator, that's, that's another one of the areas. And the good news about 2013 is we said we laid out this technical roadmap and we've made progress. So for example, in the area of open uh, communication protocols, we've decided to standardize on OPC UA. And we've made a lot of advancements across the company. And we've actually put OPC UA into 10 products. And we did that all in 2013. So with those, that momentum of controls convergence, we come into 2014. So what, what are we going to do now? Well, first of all, we're going to stay the course with controls convergence. This is a commitment we've made. And we've made a huge commitment to the industrial internet. So we're going to carry forward that, that technical roadmap. And like any technical roadmap, we've made a lot of advancements in some areas and in other areas not as quick. So the other thing that we're doing in 2014 is we're really self-reflective this year at GE. And what we realize is that we need to go faster and we need to listen to our customers better. So we're using some tools called FastWorks tools, which many, many in the business world have heard about this FastWorks paradigm that's out there. So we, we're all getting uh, learned in the FastWorks ways. And what FastWorks really is about, it's about, hey, we think we have a great idea. I'll give you a real example. A great idea we think we have is that controls configuration is very difficult. And we believe that if we can make controls configuration 10 times faster and or 10 times cheaper than it is right now, that we'll create a whole new value proposition for customers. So we believe that. In fact, and we have enough internal feedback from our other sister businesses that we really believe it, but before we spend a whole bunch of money making that true from a technical perspective, we're going to go talk to a bunch of customers and get their feedback. So FastWorks is all about a build, measure, learn loop. Build the min most minimally viable thing that you can, talk to some customers, get their feedback, take their feedback into the cycle that you have, and then develop technologies along the way with, with those uh, paradigms in mind. So we're very focused on FastWorks in 2014, and we're going to use it to make controls convergence real. Oh, great. You know, one of the biggest cheerleaders for uh, Internet of Things has certainly been your CEO, Jeffrey Immelt. Yeah. Uh, how has Jeffrey Immelt's vision really affected GE Intelligent Platforms and what you're in your products and services and how you're going to market? Yeah, so I, I would answer this one in three ways. Um, GE, with Jeff's enthusiasm, has invested in a software center of excellence in San Ramon, California. And that Software Center of Excellence is developing a, a suite of industrial software tools that will help us bring 
analytics and applications expertise on the top of this converged controls roadmap that I talked about. We're so serious about making sure that we have one roadmap as General Electric at the controls level and also at the application or analytics level that we have placed a number of people in San Ramon to work side by side with these folks who are driving the industrial internet so we can bring the, those promises to our customers much faster. And then I would say we have a new focus at GE Intelligent Platforms about how we look across our portfolio. So we have assets, we have PLC assets, we have high-end turbine control assets, we have data management assets, we have SCADA assets, and we've become much more serious about looking at those assets and figuring out how we can piece them together to enable, to enable the industrial internet faster for our customers. An example that I would give there is we had a hypothesis, actually a really smart guy in our business had a hypothesis that we probably have enough of the base tools to put together to allow remote monitoring for a particular class of OEM customers that don't have it right now. So not the high-end customers, but right underneath there. So they might just not be big enough to have their own. And you know what? We pieced together those tools and we went out to those customers and we said, does this help you solve an unmet need? And they said yes. And so. So from everything from the way that we're staffing ourselves, the way that we're working with our software center in San Ramon, to the hypothesis that we're putting forward about how can we get the industrial internet and the benefits of that to our customers faster, really it's, it's impacting everything that we do every day. You know, if you, if you think in terms of that and then you think of like the industries that you work in, uh, what are, besides industrial ethernet, uh, industrial, you know, ethernet of things, what are some of the hot buttons, you know, per industry, and, and, and do you have particular vertical solutions to solve those problems? Interesting question, yeah. So, I'll, I'll list the hot buttons first. Um, Security is a hot button. When we talk about the Internet of Things, security is, is, a, is a tough thing for very valid reasons. It's tough for cultural reasons, but there are also actual uh, governmental regulations that will regulate you know, what we can do with data and how it's going to be managed in certain kinds of industries. So we are very focused and have stood up a lot of capability to handle the security, handle the hot button that we know that our customers, and honestly, we have that hot button as well. We also uh, see... I don't know if I would call it a hot button, but a, a real need in customers who have what we call mission critical applications. So applications that, uh, it could be like government or industry customers that have some sort of application that needs to run 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And so even up to this point of doubling down in controls convergence, we've been a leader in providing what we call high availability control systems to customers that have this particular need. We believe that we're able to address that even better with the efforts that we've made in controls convergence. So we're standardizing on some, some on, on open protocols and open communications. And I'm going to use Profinet as, as the example in this, um, in this conversation. So we have invested in Profinet system redundancy. To us, that means that we can take these high availability solutions for customers that really need their stuff to work 24-7. We can take it to a lot more customers that have this need because Profinet makes that, that solution so much easier for customers to implement. There's a single point of configuration, the cost point is correct, the I.O. can be distributed, uh, just a whole bunch of benefit there. So, so I guess I've covered, too, the security issue, uh, maybe not a hot button, but a need we see with customers that got to have their stuff work all the time. And then I think the last thing I would address is, is, is open versus proprietary. So in the past, we have had proprietary things inside of our architecture, and we are really moving toward openness and open protocols. The examples I can come up with are Profinet, which I already mentioned, and OPCUA. That will really be our, our mantra going forward to help customers uh, use our stuff and make it easy for them to use our stuff. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for being with us today. And this is Craig Resnick uh, at the ARC Orlando Forum 2014. Thanks so much. Have a great day.